Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mesri and I'm an artist and ambassador for Faber-Castell Australia. Through this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I draw a portrait. Drawing faces can be very intimidating, so hopefully through this tutorial, I can help you get started with drawing portraits. For this drawing, I will be using Faber-Castell's graphite sketch set and charcoal sketch set. I will be using majority of the products and tools provided in each set. The graphite sketch set includes a range of six graphite pencils ranging from 2H to 6B, as well as an eraser and a sharpener. The charcoal sketch set includes two charcoal pencils and a white pit pastel pencil, as well as two charcoal willow sticks, a kneadable eraser and a blending stump. Okay, so to get started, you will need to begin with a light pencil. So I'm going to be starting off with a 2H pencil. And what you have to do is just sketch a circle. So you can use something to help you like a bowl or a lit or just freehand sketch like me. This stage of the artwork doesn't have to be perfect as we will be erasing this later on. So now you want to draw another circle and this is going to be right here and it's just going to slightly overlap the previous circle we just drew. Also make sure that this circle is just a little bit smaller. Once you've drawn the smaller circle, I want you to just outline and connect the two circles like I am here to start creating the face shape and the jawline. Now create two lines on each side of the smaller circle, curving outwards slightly to create the outline of the neck and the shoulders. The bottom of the larger circle here is going to guide us to draw the lips. As you can see here, I'm using that line as the middle part of the lips and drawing the shape around it. As you would have noticed, I've already drawn a horizontal and a vertical line in the middle of the larger circle. Draw a second horizontal line slightly underneath the first one. The top line will help us know where to draw the eyebrows and the bottom line will help us know where to draw the eyes. Okay, so bringing you all in a little closer, it's time to start drawing the nose. I'm going to teach you a technique that I use when drawing noses. To start, draw a circle. Then, draw two smaller circles on each side. Now draw two lines that slightly curve inwards. This will be the bridge of the nose. Connect it from the middle circle to the eyebrow. Now roughly outline the outer part of all the circles to connect them like this. Soon we will add shading and highlights to make it three dimensional. I've gone in and just roughly drawn the outline of the hair. Once this part is complete, you have to really lightly erase over top what we just drew with a kneadable eraser. Erase just enough so that we can still see the drawing so that it can help guide us when we add more defined lines and shading. So now grab a HB pencil and just make a more defined and darker outline of the face shape as well as the neck and shoulder area. Once you've done this, it's time to start with the eyes. I like starting with the eyes on a portrait because not only are they my favourite thing to draw, but they also are the most difficult part of the face in my opinion, so I like to get that out of the way first. So still using the HB pencil, start off by drawing a basic almond shape. I've made a little mistake, so I've placed the corner of the eye just a bit too high for my liking, so I'm actually going to redraw this and I'm going to draw this diagonal line to show you how I want the eye to be placed and I'm also going to use it as a guideline for when I redraw it. So once you have the desired eye shape, you now want to start drawing the eyelid. Just draw a line above the eye and mimic its shape. It should curve slightly and taper in at the corner. Now add a bottom lid, which same thing is a line that mimics the shape of the eye. 
Now draw the iris which is a half circle in the middle of the eye. Then add a smaller circle in the middle of the iris. This will be the pupil. Above the pupil, add a small rectangular shape, which will be the light reflection. I'm going to roughly sketch in some eyelashes. You want to use a quick flicking motion, taping outwards along the top lash line of the eye. We will be refining this later on, so it doesn't matter if it looks a bit rough at the moment. Now grab your pit charcoal pencil from the charcoal sketch set, and what you want to do is just colour in the iris lightly and then blend it out. So when you colour in the pupil, make sure you use hard pressure so that you can ensure that it is as dark as possible as the pupil is always black. Make sure to leave the rectangular shape for the light reflection bare. So you want to make sure that you use your blending stump to continuously blend. So you want to blend with the blending stump that's provided in the charcoal sketch set. Blending is really important when you're creating graphite or charcoal drawings. If you want to create smooth shading, a blending stump will be your best friend for this. What I'm going to do here, because I have used graphite to sketch, I'm going to lightly erase out the lines with my eraser. So when you're a mixed media artist like me, sometimes two different mediums will not mix. So they won't really like each other. They won't sit properly on top of each other. So charcoal and graphite don't really mix. If you try to draw on top of graphite with charcoal, it won't sit on the paper properly. You want to start with the top lash line and for this I'm going to use a pit charcoal pencil from the charcoal sketch set and I'm just going to draw a thick line on the top lash line and I'm going to blend this out with the blending stump. So when blending, you do want to actually try and smoke it out so that it can look very seamless. As well as blending the lash line into the top lid and smoking it out, you also want to actually take the blending stump and blend it downwards as well. And you want to blend it into the white part of the eye. Typically, the white part of the eye is never actually white. It's actually grey. So um, this will ensure that it looks really realistic and three-dimensional. Now grabbing a 4B pencil from the graphite sketch set, I'm going to now put the pencil at an angle and I'm going to shade really lightly that whole area between the top lash line and the eyebrow. Once you've shaded this in, you want to grab your blending stump and blend it out and make it seamless and smooth. If you're having trouble with blending with a blending stump, it's really good if you actually put your blending stump at an angle and just blend in circular motions. So now using the excess graphite that's on the blending stump, I'm actually going to take that and just run it across the bottom lash line and start creating some type of grey tone.
So just grab your kneadable eraser and start taking off some of the charcoal from the middle of the eyelid as it does look a bit flat and we just want to bring back that three dimensional look. So now I'm going in with a black polychroma pencil by Faber-Castell and this is my favorite pencil. This pencil I use for everything and if you really want to get some really deep tones to create depth, a black pencil is what you need. Um, I prefer a black pencil as opposed to a charcoal. If you don't have a polychroma pencil, you can use a 6B pencil in the graphite sketch set. So that is also a deep tone. Not as deep as black. Black is the deepest tone. But it will still work fine. Now going in with that black pencil or your 6B pencil. We're going to start defining the eyelashes. So same technique as before. You want to start from the underside of the top lash line and you want to taper it out curve and flick it and taper it out of the eye and you want to do this with a really fast hand movement so you just continue to do that just along the top lash line you can make them really uniformed or you can make them quite random personally i feel like when they're a bit random it looks more realistic and yeah, you can just layer them as well. So you can layer two that taper into one. Um, that's typically how I would do it. Again, eyelashes can be really difficult, especially when you're starting out to make them look realistic. A lot of people, when they try drawing eyelashes, they actually draw just straight lines coming out. We don't want straight lines. We want it to curve naturally. Eyelashes naturally curve. So yes, you don't you want to avoid drawing them straight up. You want them to curve slightly and to the side. So let it taper out diagonally. So moving on to the eyebrow. Eyebrow shapes can vary, so you can draw it to your liking. I like a slightly arched eyebrow, and you typically want the eyebrow to be roughly the same length as the eye, but sometimes just slightly longer towards the tail. So grab a charcoal pencil and fill in the eyebrow shape that you've drawn, but leave the front area bare. Typically eyebrows are gradient which means the front is always a bit lighter. Now blend it with a blending stump and then you can just add some little defined hairs throughout and also maybe erase out little gaps to make it even more realistic. Now moving on to the nose, start by shading in that circle we drew earlier. 
Always tilt your pencil to an angle and use a light hand to shade in. Once you have shaded that in, blend it out with the blending stump. Create the side shape of the nose using the small circle we drew earlier as a guideline. Draw the nostrils and shade behind those lines like I'm doing here. Use a 4B or 6B for this step. Make sure to continuously blend out that shading to ensure a smooth and seamless finish. I've drawn the bridge of the nose using a HB pencil and lightly shading upwards from under the beginning of the brow, connecting it to the nose. I'm also going in with a 6B and further darkening and adding layers around the middle circle and tip of the nose to create depth. So what you wanna do is you just wanna keep adding layers of dark shading so you can use a 4b or a 6b for this step and just keep gradually adding shadow towards the bridge and around the middle circle of the nose once you've completed the shading of the nose it's time to create some highlights grab your kneadable eraser and mold it to a point erase out using a dabbing motion along the middle of the bridge of the nose and the tip Also lightly erase out some of the sides as well. Moving on to the lips, we already have the outline and shape of the lips drawn. So now what you have to do is just shade the whole area in with a HB pencil and then blend it out using a blending stump. Once that's complete, define the middle line with a 4B pencil. Now using that same pencil, you wanna draw and outline a defined line just at the bottom, so where the bottom lip and the chin connect leaving the two sides of that bottom lip bare. Now using the same pencil, shade in the top lip and then blend it out. Now grab a HB pencil and shade in the bottom lip and then blend it out. with a 6B pencil and just further define and darken that middle line to create depth. Now from that dark line we've drawn, 
you need to start coloring the top lip with the 6B and gradually lightening it. So don't color it fully, leave the top a bit lighter to create a slight gradient. And remember to also blend this part as well. Now it's time to create some cracks and wrinkles in the bottom lip. You do this by using your kneadable eraser and shaping it to a flat point like so and just start erasing out lines on the bottom lip. With each line you erase, draw a line opposite with a light pencil, preferably a 2H pencil, which is what I'm using here. So for the hair, I've got a rough outline already drawn. I've decided to draw a messy bun for this portrait. I'm going to start off by grabbing the charcoal pencil and I'm going to sand it down on this sandpaper and create a charcoal powder. Then I'm going to grab a brush and here I'm just using a regular makeup brush and I'm going to fill in the hair with the powder. Got the base layer with the charcoal powder so now you just have to grab a 6b pencil from the graphite sketch set and just shade in that whole area on top of the charcoal powder again tilt the pencil at an angle to shade as this will ensure the best technique for shading After blending it out with a blending stump, grab a kneadable eraser and start erasing out random bits of the hair. So this will ensure some dimension to the hair and so that it doesn't look completely flat. Grab a black pencil or 6B pencil and add some depth using hard pressure on the pencil. And colour in some areas around the highlights we created with the kneadable eraser. After adding a few finishing touches and there you have it, the completed portrait. I hope that you have taken something from this tutorial and can apply it to your own art practice. Thank you so much for watching.